What's up world? Michael EJ here coming to you with another video in the field of finance, business, and life. Well today we're going to take more of a both finance and business look into the things that are happening in the world and what I will call the success equation to both. Both finance and probably just anything professional. What's going on in your career, if you want to become an entrepreneur, I will say it's the success and it's going to apply, it's going to open your mind to different ideas of how you think about how to set yourself up for success. Now with that, let's get started. So the idea that I'm going to be talking about here is actually called the fundamental law of active management. For those who are really into finance, at the highest level, in asset management, um, in the sorts, it's better known as the information ratio. And this fundamental law of active management, the reason I call it the success equation, because it's really the key behind being a successful investor. If you think about it, and there's two sides of this equation. You have skill and you have breadth or opportunities. So let's attack each one separately. Now, most people out there, if they're gonna become an investor, they like to know a lot about the businesses they're investing in, or know a little about the management, where the company can go. Well, there's a brand of investors out there that take it to the next level. It's the hedge fund guys. They they go to meet the company management. They try to get on the, the board. They try to influence management. Um, they, I mean, a lot of company meetings, deep due diligence. They're not just depending on what the company's sending them, but they're talking to consultants in the industry. Or they're trying to grab industry data. Or they're talking to the company that they're interested in, talking to their competitors. I mean, they take it to the next level. They really focus on the skill aspect. And what I would say is relative skill. They also view companies a little bit differently. Or they know they're good in different sectors or good at um, companies that are in different stages of their life cycles. There's some that prefer mature companies, some that prefer companies that are in technology, so all the all the sorts, they really have this high relative skill set. Not just what makes them different than the average person or even the average investor, but makes them different than the average fundamental investor. That that's like high level, and if you can achieve that as an investor, that I mean you got something there. You could have sustained success and possibly beat the market. Now. On the skill, when you have high relative skill, it usually limits the amount of opportunities you have. I mean, think about it. If you're somebody who really focuses more on mature companies, where you can look at a long history, you're talking to more sophisticated executives, sophisticated management, you really need to understand what's going on in their history, how they can move forward, how they can focus on rewarding shareholders. It's a very small number of those companies. There's maybe 3,000 companies in the, on the U.S. stock exchanges right now. And maybe you're limiting yourself to maybe the Fortune 500, maybe the Fortune 1,000. You know, and I mean, some of those are private too. Some of those are uh, icky. You don't want to touch those companies. So you, that's one thing. If you focus more on one side of the equation in the stock market, the other kind of lacks. Just a little bit. Now, I mean, it balances out. I mean, because you still, I mean, you still got, you know, speaking a thousand companies to work with potentially, and more realistic, maybe 300, 400. So you still got plenty of room to run. But yeah, I mean, versus the full amount, it's a little bit less. So that's what the real good fundamental hedge fund guys and equity investors are. At. They focus really high on relative skill. What makes them different than any other fundamental manager? Well, the other side to the equation, of course, is the amount of opportunities you have. And this is where the quants, the quantitative investors, where they really thrive. The guys that, they all, most of them got PhDs, they know how to program, they're learning all, using artificial intelligence, machine learning. They're looking at just trends in data, vast amount of data. They're looking for just a little bit of a difference, a little relative skill, and just churn it out. Have multiple, multiple opportunities. Now, when I say that, 
what I mean is usually the fundamental guys, because of how much work they put into a company, into an investment, the ones that really do well don't have it. They don't hold a lot of stocks. They hold 10, 20, maybe 30 stocks. The quants hold hundreds, sometimes even thousands of stocks. And they hold them for much shorter time periods. Weeks, days, sometimes those high frequency trading guys, hours, minutes, milliseconds, milliseconds. I'm talking right now. One, they're, they're already trading in an hour stock. It's ridiculous. So they find something very little skill, but if they can express it so much, it makes up for itself. It's similar to return on investment. Like I mentioned before in other videos, return on investment is most important for evaluating the business. You got margin, you got turnover. Sometimes people pay too much attention to margin, but turnover is very important. The relative skill is the margin. The amount of opportunities is the turnover. And you can succeed in business and in investment with having a focus on one or the other and just don't forget about the other. I mean, you, you can go 80% here or 80% here, but you need 20 on the other side. So just keep that in mind whenever you're investing. As a retail investor, somebody that's new to the game, if you want to lean more on the skill side, I would suggest picking a sector that you either work in or that requires special knowledge. There's a couple of them. Energy, financials, real estate, biotech, um, or just general healthcare. Some that's connecting more to engineering, so that can be mainly in industrials. If you look at companies there and you already have specialized knowledge there because you work at a company or you know somebody that works there and you could just use that knowledge and apply it to the investment side, you can separate yourself from the pack. If you want to focus more on opportunities, use ETLs based on known, tried and true equity anomalies, equity factors. I've talked about this before known ways to beat the market. So it's dividend and shareholder yield, it's value, it's momentum, it's quality. Look at those uh, ETFs because they're a slew of them. For example, dividends. If you believe hard in dividends, if that's the way to take you to the next level, then look at different ways to do dividends. So some look there's some ETFs that have the highest dividend yield. Other ETFs, fast dividend growers. You know, if you buy both, you know, that's two ways to express something that you think could work in the long term. Keep that in mind. That's just another way to kind of look at the opportunity side. So this can be pulled off in the on your end in investing. Just remember you need to kind of focus on one or the other to truly have long sustained success. This is also important in life, but there's also a twist to it. Because in life, the more relative skill you have, the more opportunities you tend to have. But relative skill is very hard to achieve. And when I say relative skill, I'm not talking about the average person, maybe, or maybe even, not even the average person in your industry, but you, you know, how are you gonna really stick out? What's the magnitude? That's the real key. What's the magnitude of how much you stick out? Realize it to somebody that's already in your industry. Maybe the same for this in your end. Um, so if you're an analyst now, what makes you stick out versus other analysts? If you're a vice president today, what makes you stick out versus other vice presidents in that company, in that field? Or as an entrepreneur, what, make, what makes your offering so different to others that have a similar offering, similar product, similar service? Think about not just, I'm different, but exactly how different am I? That's next level stuff, but the more different you are, the more opportunities you have. It just creates more openings for you. It creates more doors for you to walk through. I can say this because I can give you my experience on the job market. Now, I have a little bit of a background that's mixed between finance and economics. They're similar. They're similar. They're not the same. And any jobs that have high levels of jobs where finance people go to, finance majors, or, and 
high level of economic majors going into. Where there's a good mix between the two, those are usually the jobs I, I kind of go for and will probably see me as a very good candidate for those roles. And I'll explain why because the best way to really have that relative skill is through different experiences, differentiated experiences. So first and foremost, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family, grew up in a family business, and towards going to college, wanted to start connecting the dots. When do we have good sales? When do we have bad sales? When, when does our high ticket items, when do they sell? When do we need to focus more on the low ticket items? How important is marketing to a business? Advertising. It's all these different questions I have about business. So that's one thing that really sticks out and a lot of people actually don't have that. So that's going, that's the first thing. Second off, while in college, I did economic research, academic, academic research in the field of economics. That's something normally a finance person for a normal finance job doesn't do. On the other end, I also was part of a stock pitch competition, large thing for the CFA, something an economic major wouldn't do. So I, I have experiences on both sides and those experiences are very important if there's a blend of the two. Now, for jobs that pure finance guys go into or jobs that pure economic guys go into, that's where I struggle. So pure finance guys, it's probably investment banking and private equity. I probably won't make it there. there it's all about the outcome, uh, theoretical concepts or even thinking about them, abstract ideas, go out the window. On the other end, on the econ side, some of the top economists in the world, they teach at well-renowned uh, institutions, universities. I'm talking. So I'm not gonna work on the true finance side. I'm not gonna work on the pure economic side. Everything in between for me is fair game though. I may be a viable candidate. So uh, that could be consulting, uh, financial, economic, management, consulting. That could be asset management, you know, managing money for others, maybe financial advisor. It can even be some higher level research, but maybe for an organization, like the Federal Reserve, or for a think tank, where there's more practicality to their research. Those, those are areas I can fit in. I can't do well on the extremes, but everything in between, I'm, I'm good. I have differentiated experiences for both average finance and economics major, which leads to more opportunities. And that's how I want you to think about your career, your profession, your business idea. Because th this is the difference between finance and business, and that finance usually if you have too strong of a focus, too much of a niche, you don't have as much opportunity. But that can, at times it's more prevalent in the real world, in business, that if you stay out just enough, you open doors you wouldn't even imagine. And that's what I'm going to leave you with today. Think about this hard and let it just sink in. Have some relative skill and have plenty of opportunities to express it. This is just one of these concepts that I think comes from finance that works really well in other areas of life. And I'm going to express more of those. That's kind of the focus for me. And I just want to share these different ideas with you. Over here on this channel, my lead day, talk finance, business, and life differentiated topics, differentiated views. So remember, skill times opportunity, and how can that, how can you weave in this equation to your life? So until next time.